<laughs> well, welcome back to school. And as you can see, Rotuno Konyike is trying her hand in uh, spinning the ball, but uh, she has some aid here that uh, Joe has uh, given her. How does it feel? Uh, what, feel like what, what matters is that the ball is spinning, as you can see. Should we take um, out the aid? <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the show. We are joined by Joe Odiambo, as from earlier. Joe, just tell us, how did you even come up with the idea of dribbling in the first place? Well, uh, after I graduated, I went to work as a computer programmer. But I did that for about five years, and I just got tired of just, yes, sitting in the room and just doing computer. I thought I wanted to get back into the field, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get back into basketball because I play basketball. And I saw this lady called Tanya Crevier. She was a spinner. And I saw at a camp, and I was so impressed the way she would spin a basketball and what he would do to hold a crowd. I asked her to mentor me, and she taught me a couple of skills. And I went home, and I practiced. And eventually, I practiced at least, at least two hours a day for a whole year to be able to build a platform. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a motivational speaker, the basketball handling part became such a wonderful platform that when you spin a basketball, people stop and look and go like, wow, that one is so cool. And then that's when you can go ahead and share some of the things that I talked about. And I talk about respect, I talk about responsibility, and I talk about caring, because those are the tools that we all need to be able to move forward with whatever we do. How fast did you take up the skill after learning? Oh, I think I, when I was in Kenya, I was one of those juggernauts. I would kind of play with one, two basketball, and then the game that we used to play back here, mm -hmm. yeah, jumping around and throwing rocks up in the air kind of helped to actually get the skills going. And it didn't take a whole lot, but it took a lot of time because I practiced almost every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sure. It's, it's, it's been a long journey. How has this impacted your life? All these world records, the elevation of status? Well, the first ball is a basketball gap in the United States. And then once I'm there with my basketball handling skills, I have had a chance to travel all over the world. I have had a chance to meet some of the most amazing athletes that you can think of. A lot of people see Michael Jordan going like, man, he's so cool. I had a chance to actually talk to Michael Jordan and he shook my hand in 2006 when I set the world record for spinning one basket for the longest time and dribbling one basketball for the longest time, 26 hours and 46 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And I've gone to the NBA the last 16 years. You say 26 hours. 16, yeah, 26 hours, four, yeah. Without sitting down, mm -hmm. no sleeping, no eating anything. You just drink water only. And the best part, no bathroom break. <laughs> Why? You can't be drinking water and no bathroom break well, for the whole Well, you, you have to be very, very careful about how you drink it. You yes. don't want to drink too much because when you drink too much, obviously you're going to have to go. So you're just going to nibble, you're just going to sip a little bit to be able to stay alive. Is, it, is, is, is that the longest uh, that you've... That, uh, that is the longest record, that's the longest time. But after that record, mm -hmm. after 26 hours, the doctor figured out that for, in order for them to break that record, they have to go longer than 26 hours. Mm -hmm. And it's not very feasible for somebody to be able to go that long without any kind of physical need. Mm -hmm. So they changed the rules. After that, um, I was part of the, the pioneer that changed the rules. Now for every one hour, mm -hmm. you get a five minutes break. Uh -huh. So that dribbling record, would last forever. Ah, mm -hmm. that will last forever. Yeah, that will last forever. I'm sure someone sitting at home watching is wondering, how much wealth has this fellow amassed by breaking all these world records? Mm -hmm. Well, I can say that I am comfortable with everything that I do. I'm comfortable and I do have a chance because basketball mm -hmm. brings me here every year, twice a year. Mm -hmm. And you know, coming from the United States to come here, it's quite expensive and I get to travel all over the world. So it pays really, really well compared to all the other jobs. And the best part is I get, get paid for doing what I love. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically being paid to play with basketball and it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, uh, speaking, speaking about that, uh, did you see yourself, you know, growing up at this stage that you are right now? Oh. As the best dribbler in the world, all these more than 20 records uh, to your name. Well, I knew that I was going to be good at something, mm -hmm. but uh, basketball was not quite what it is. But once I started playing it, I realized, that, hey, I can actually do this. Mm -hmm. And then so when I believed and got inspired, I figured out, hey, this is something that I love doing, run with it. And it's been 19 years mm -hmm. and I've, I'm having fun like it's the first day. Having fun like it's the first day. You're back in the country, you held uh, some uh, basketball clinics and, yeah. and you know, in, in your own general view, you know, where are we in basketball? 
we are moving forward. Mm -hmm. We are moving forward, and there's a lot of enthusiasm with the players. They want to play basketball. I'm just hoping that we'll be able to build more facilitated basketball mm -hmm. courts where the kids can get to play because we need numbers. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is we want so many people to play basketball. Mm -hmm. We are good in athletics because we have so many kids that are running in Albert all over. Mm -hmm. So among the group here, we can find one or two traditions in there. Mm -hmm. We want basketball too. We want a lot of players to play basketball mm -hmm. be because in that big pool, we'll be able to find another Joe Oriambo. We'll be able to find an another basketball player, but we need facility. Mm -hmm. We need facility because that's the most important part. Kids have to go up and play. Mm -hmm. In the United States, we have 26 million people that play basketball. Mm -hmm. That's a big pool, so you are able to find the greatest out of the big pool. We mm -hmm. don't have a very big pool, so we need to work on that, but mm -hmm. we're going in the right direction. Still on that, have you identified maybe a few individuals who you've mentored uh, from all that you have amassed? Uh, most, most of my, my prodigy are back in the States here, but I'm coming back and I've been working with, our, uh, with a couple of friends here that I've already found a couple of players that we're going to be monitoring. Mm -hmm. And I told them that I want to keep a tap on this kid and as they get better, I need, I need an update. And as they get better, I'm going to be speaking to our other coaches that I work with. And if they're able, if they're capable, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm going to be able to point in the right direction and maybe get some scholarship for them to come up and play back in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We were at over, the, uh, over at Omoja, and mm -hmm. I saw some amazing kids that were really, really happy to have me there. And they wanted to play, and they were just going back and forth. And that's what we need. Mm -hmm. We need them to get in there, have some fun, and be good at it along the line. 19 years of doing this, I, I mean, uh, breaking record, record after record, what keeps you going? Where, where, where does the hunger come from? Well, I, I think it's the, the, the part where you go up and you speak to kids and mm -hmm. you do basketball tricks and you see somebody go just looking at you and just mesmerizing like, man, I want to be just like that person. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm looking for because I remember when I was here so many years ago, I was up in Madari and I saw an NBA player and I was so excited. I, I want to be just like him. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm able to go up and motivate somebody is what really can't because we need role models and we need to give this kid a sense that you can do it. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let me just take a look, uh, read a, a few tw tweets here. We do have uh, Kim Sam saying, I remember once appeared on uh, Ripley's Wonderful. And then we do have. Uh, Mbori, that is uh, Bob Mbori saying that, uh, wow, that's jo Big Joe. Kudos, Kaka played together at KQ in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Superb <laughs> captain, many years uh, down the line you played uh, together. So now going forward, uh, what should we expect uh, from uh, Big Joe? I mean, yes, you've, uh, you've, been, you've uh, broken, you've come here, you've uh, broken a record. You've, been, uh, t you've uh, gone to different camps. I mean, you've imparted uh, skills to different youngsters. And now going forward, what should we expect you? Oh, I, I have or is, is yeah. there any tiring for you? No, no, I'm still going strong and uh, I've talked to a, a lot of people here and uh, even Pat, my, my friend here for me, Tian, mm -hmm. he's kind of working on a program later on mm -hmm. in December. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be coming back with the full program mm -hmm. and we are going to be targeting a lot of school, we're going to a lot of camps, we're going to be targeting a lot of kids and we want to be able to make it, we want to be able to make it something that they can actually be able to attain. Mm -hmm. okay? Because many a time when a star comes in, they don't go into this grassroots area, mm -hmm. and that's where I want to go. I want to go to those fields in Umoja, in some of those Madari Valley, where those kids are looking for something to, to hold on to. Yes. And I want to be that twine that they hold on to and say, you know what, I can hold it and get pulled out of the hole. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Joe, how much ground are you willing to cover uh, in your plans? Because uh, we've talked about Nairobi County. Generally, you came from St. Patrick's City. Have yeah. you taken time to go back and at least develop the sport? In those. We, we, are, we are working and this will be the first time where we're going to be able to set a ground. So we're going to be able to, because normally I go and I meet with, with the player, mm -hmm. but then I leave. But now we want to be able to set the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and Pat and I are going to be working on that. And when we come back in, when I come back in December, we're going to be able to set something and be able to go in there, meet the, meet the teachers, meet the players, meet the coaches, and actually get them going. And then as they start going, we will keep a tab on what's going on. Where do they need help? And then we'll see if we can get more help for them to come in. And, and help them grow the game because mm -hmm. the game is right about to explode but we need to make sure that we actually push it mm -hmm. further up mm -hmm. and uh, before we let you go joe we want to see the cream on top like the the trick that anywhere you go people want to see that trick all right yes. before Let's we let you go <laughs> all right 
This is a good one. This yes. is a good one. And how do you call it? What's, what's the name that you've given? Yeah, it? this one here yes. is one of my favorite four basketball drills. Go ahead and give me the mouth. Give, give me the hat. Mm -hmm. And then give me the mouthpiece here, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one is the mouthpiece, that we, the one that we use. Yes. Okay. So this one here. Mm -hmm. And then finally, yes. this is one of my favorite. Yes. And it took me a long time to master it, mm -hmm. but I think I should be able to do it. Give me uh, the black one. Thank you. <laughs> this one here should be a good one. You can hold on to that one for now. Well, this is interesting, interesting to watch. Wow. Well, of course, we have uh, Joe who set uh, also a record in that. You set a record in that. Which oh, yeah. year was it? Yeah. That was uh, spin, yes, yep, spinning yes, and basketball. And juggling three basketball, that was last year. Last year. Yeah. Every year you have a new record. I try to set at least two records on my every stop. 20 records so far. I'm, and I'm counting. And Still counting. No tiring. <laughs> They're there, so you might as well go after them. <laughs> Are you going to disclose your next trick for the next world record? Oh, my, my next trick, the one I'm going to be doing, actually, mm -hmm. is, uh, and this is, this is very hard, it's spinning three basketball mm -hmm. and juggling two basketball. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on it. And I'm up to about 10 seconds, mm -hmm. but I still need to be able to come up with at least a minute on that one. So that one is the one that is in the burner cooking right now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get, you'll also come uh, right here on Scholar to break uh, the next record. And if you are wondering, the man that is always been referring to as Pat and the man that has been throwing the balls, Pat, if you can come. Come on up. Yes, this is the man that has been throwing the balls to... Uh, Big Joe right here. They went to school, same school. Yes. That was uh, St. Patrick's in 10 back in uh, the day. And uh, he's uh, the man uh, that uh, ensured uh, that we got him. Thank, thanks a lot uh, for finding time to bring Big Joe thank to you. us. And thank Big you, Joe, thank you, for having thank you a, a lot for thank finding you. time to come and break a record right here. We do appreciate. We'll be seeing you, of course, uh, next time. That is in December when you have uh, 